So let's start off today reviewing something from homework. So if you haven't finished your homework, it's not due until Friday. We want to hit one of the problems that we've had some issues with. I think I've addressed it in this class. I know I addressed it in the other class. Um, but we have a problem like find the domain. Sorry, and we have a problem like um, <coughs> f of x equal, I don't remember the exact problem homework. It was something like 2 over 4 over x minus 1. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And it says find the domain. So first of all, we look at a problem like that. By the way, how's your weekend? Uh, uh, it was all right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Mine wasn't fantastic. <laughs> Uh, so what type of function is this? It's not radical, it's not polynomial, it is? It's not quadratic. That would be polynomial. Uh, we only talked about three of them. So it's linear. Not, not linear. Cubic. No. If you look at the first page of your notes, the very first thing, we only talked about three functions. We talked about radical, polynomial, and Rational. Oh, this rational. is a rational function. Oh. So with rational functions, remember we're watching out for that denominator. What values can the denominator not be? Yeah. So the domain here is all reals. But then we're going to have something like x cannot be certain things. Okay? So if you look at this, we actually have two distinct denominators. In fact, we have a composite function. We have a function of rational function inside of a rational function. Okay, So we have the function 2 over 4 over x minus 1. We also have the function 4 over x minus 1. Okay, So in this case, what can the denominator not be? 4. Nope. In this case. It can't be 0. Because if I have 0, 4 over 0 minus 1, that's a problem. So x cannot be 0. However, not only do we have to look at that small part of the function, but look at it as a whole. So in this case, what cannot be zero? The whole, denominator. the whole denominator. Four over x minus one also cannot be zero. Okay. So what value would make that zero? Four. Four, because four over four is one. 1 minus 1 would be 0. So x, if you need to walk through it, you'd add 1 to both sides. 4 over x cannot be equal to 1. And then the shortcut, you just switch the x and the 1. 4 over 1 cannot be x. Therefore, x cannot be a value of 4. So you kind of do it intuitively just by looking at it. But if you need to walk through the algebra, there's the one. So kind of a tricky one on domain. It's, once again, it's kind of what we did at the end. We did composite functions, put a couple together, and then determine what the domain is. It still follows the same rules. Okay. Right, any other questions from homework that you can remember? Uh, we need to look at it real quick. If not, we can do it afterwards. I just have problems with 75, 81, and 90, but you said do it after. So. Okay, we can look at those. No, I'm good. You good? Yeah. You good? Good. I don't think the homework's due till Friday, so you have all week. I'll give you some time today. But I, I, today I don't know. We'll see um, how much time we have. So, uh, lecture 15. I am recording this, so those people who aren't here can get it. Lecture 15. Okay, so we talked about um, functions last time. We did a quick re review on all different types of functions, uh, composite functions. Uh, all those things. Today we're going to look at inverse functions. This we did look at last year in algebra two as well. Okay. So what do we think of when we think of inverse? What's an, what's an inverse? Opposite. Opposite. It undoes. It on whatever is done to inverses un undoes it. Okay. So inverse of addition, subtraction, inverse of multiplication, division, so forth. So for the definition of inverse functions. And you can wait and abbreviate this a little bit if you want. It's fairly lengthy. I think I may start to abbreviate a little bit. But um, it's let 
f and g be two functions, and then I'm going to put s t. That stands for such that. So it's two functions, f and g, such that if I take f of g of x, if I do the composite function f of g, that's going to be equal to x on the entire domain. And the opposite is also true. So if I do f and g and I do g into f, I get a value of x. If I flip it around and I do g of f of x, that will also equal x on the entire domain. Now if you didn't catch that, it doesn't matter which one I go to, if f goes into g or g goes into f, which means that the function has to be one to one. If it's not one to one, that won't happen. Okay. So in order to have an inverse, it has to be one to one such that f of g equals x and g of f equals x. Let's put some practical example down this. Oh, and one more thing. Does anyone know how it's, how it's noted? Do you remember from last year how we note inverse functions? F and x. Oh, yeah. F of negative 1. So what we could have written here is we could have said, you know what, if f g of x, you know what, I failed the first time, we're not going to finish that, but we'll just go on from there. Uh, let's do one that we verify. Remember, there's two things we're going to do with inverse, verify and find. Okay. So to verify is actually fairly easy. Let's give you f of x equals, quick example, f of x is going to equal, oh, we'll do a nice little linear, 3x plus 2. And then we'll do g of x equals 1 third x minus 2 thirds. And we're going to say verify that these are actual, so verify. Well, remember, there's two ways to do it. We're going to do the mathematical way first, and we're going to do the cheating way second. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Last year, you all liked the cheating way better, but we need to do it mathematically. Okay. So first of all, let's do f of g of x. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the outside <laughs> function, 3x plus 2. And then what goes inside those parentheses? The g function, 1 third x minus 2 thirds. So if I distribute 3 times 1 third x is going to be just 1x, 3 times negative 2 thirds is going to be negative 2 plus 2, and we see that 2 minus 2 cancels out. And then we're not quite there yet, we have to do the opposite as well. We have to do g of f. So this time we do the opposite, we do one third, and then um, the parentheses x minus two thirds, and this time we put f into there, so three x plus two. Then if we distribute, what's one third times three? Uh, three. Or one, my bad. That's just one x. Mm -hmm. And then one third times two gives me plus two thirds minus two thirds equals x. Distributing that to both. So because those both equal x, this is a one to one function. It is definitely have an, they are definitely inverses. So we could say then that therefore g of x equals the inverse of Do you remember the cheating way to do it? The one that doesn't always work, but it does work a lot? Uh, I remember dealing with not having zero, one, or two in it. 
Okay, we don't want to use zero or one or two because they're kind of unique. So do you remember what we did with the number though? We pick a number. We just plug it in. Yeah. So we take like uh, we take like uh, let's take three. So let's find f of three. So three times three plus two gives me eleven. And then what do I do with eleven? You put it in the other. <coughs> put it in the other. Very good. So g of eleven equals one third times eleven minus two thirds. So eleven thirds minus two thirds gives me nine thirds, which equals three. Takes me back to where I started, and therefore they're inverses. All right. Remember that process? Yeah. It's kind of cheating, and it doesn't always work. I think we actually had one in homework that was like. It was a coincidence, it just happened to work, but they weren't actually inverses. Mm -hmm. So it's very rare, but that does that can't happen. Alright, so inverse functions. Okay, I just have a couple examples and then I'm pretty much done. But I want to make sure you see a couple a couple ways of doing them. Um, well, Finding the inverse first. Did you remember the steps to find the inverse? So that was verifying. There's really only two steps. Bueller, Bueller, thing. Okay. So really, the inverse occurs when the x and y switch places. And then number two, you simply solve for y. So you really just take the x and y and switch places. And that's the inverse, and then you would solve. So let's do a real simple linear one to begin with. Let's say I give you y equals 7x minus 5. Or maybe we give you f of x equals 7x minus 5, we just have to change the f of x to y. Then literally just take the x and the y and switch places. So x equals 7y minus 5. And that is actually the inverse. All you do is solve for y. So how would I solve for y? Just solve. By doing what? Add 5 and then divide by 7. Divide by 7. Right. So add 5. So you get x plus 5 equals 7. Y divide everything by 7. X over 7 plus 5 over 7 is going to equal y or is going to equal the inverse of x. Unfortunately, they'll be a little more complicated. Let's do a couple more complicated. Examples. There's only four of you, so you know just shout out, tell me if you're going too fast, if we need to redo something. Yeah. Can I get a bathroom on my desk? I have Kleenexes on my desk if you like to. Except in the hallway. So let's do another example. Uh, this one's you're going to see in homework is going to be a cubed function. So something like f of x equals x cubed plus 1. So y equals x cubed plus 1. Now, here's the confusing part for this one. When I say switch the x and y, that's all you do. You don't take the powers or anything with it. So it literally will become x equals y cubed plus 1. You simply switch the two variables. Then you get y by itself. So subtract 1. x minus 1 equals y cubed. And then what's the opposite of cubing something? Um, uh, like rooting it. Rooting it. Okay. And the other way to do it, think about it, is with, do you remember fractional exponents? We talked about that last year. Kind of. Kind of remember that? Fractional exponents? 
Well, if I simply take it to the power, and I take the reciprocal of one third, I'm sorry, take the reciprocal of three, which is one third, and I can do that as well. Oh, yeah. So then I have x minus one to the one third power would equal, these would cancel, would equal y or the inverse of x. And you can certainly write things with that rational exponents. In fact, I'd almost prefer the fractional exponents. But that does mean the same thing as the cube root of x minus 2. Those mean the same thing. Um, as you go further in math, this one is easier to deal with and work with than the radical. In fact, we kind of want to get away from the radical eventually. <coughs> Any questions on the roots whenever you have powers? Does that kind of make sense? Um, so like, so we have to do the, or the fractional expo exponent? It would be best if you started doing it that way. This is not wrong, mm -hmm. but just in practice, that's going to be much easier to work with. Okay, so when you have a power, you would just turn it into a fraction. It's reciprocal. So even if you had something like, um, let's say we had x equals y to the 3 fifths power, we had a fractional exponent. How do I undo that 3 fifths power? Just make it 5. Make it the inverse, 5 thirds. Um, so then x to the 5 thirds, because 1 is 3 fifths times 5 thirds. Well, it's just one. Right. So when I multiply by its reciprocal, you just eliminate the exponent. That makes sense. It doesn't matter what the fraction is or what the exponent is. All right. Does that clarify that? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Last one that might cause us issues, and that's going to be back to the old rational functions. Last example. F of x equals if I can read my hand on five over x five over x plus four. Or if you just want to skip straight to it and say y equals. So y equals five over x plus four. Okay, so obviously the first step is to subtract 4. Well, oh, I'm sorry, the obvious step is to switch x and y, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's don't forget that. x equals 5 over y plus 4. And that actually is done. The, that's, the, that's the inverse. That one step to switching x and y, that's the inverse. Okay, now just put into proper notation, we have to switch them around. So just solve for the y. So subtract 4. And now I have x minus 4 equals 5 over y. Alright, what's the shortcut? You swap the, uh, uh, the uh, top part and the bottom part of the fraction. Yeah, I can switch this numerator and this denominator. So I just switch them. y equals 5 over x minus 4. You just switch places. Now there is some math behind that. If you want to see all the little baby steps, we can do that. Um, one way is just to switch them. Say? I wanted to say that's not what I meant, but sure. That's not what you meant? I thought you, I meant like swap the 5 and the y. Okay, so um, we could do that too. Although that we'd have an additional step. If I take x minus 4 equals 5 <laughs> over y, and we have to think of that as over 1. Okay. If I flip this side to y over 5, what would I also have to do? Yeah, flip this side as well, 1 over x minus 4. And then you multiply both sides by 5, and what do you get? 5 over x minus 4. You get the same answer. So yeah, you can, you can flip numerator and denominator on one side as long as you do the other as well. That helps us too when we're solving things like, um, when we have like uh, 1 over x equals 2 thirds, and we have the x that just switch both sides x equals 3 halves. Just kind of reciprocate both 
Okay, so a little bit of a shortcut on solving those. All right, believe it or not, that's all I have for inverses. Any questions? Anything we need to go back over? I try to make them a little bit shorter, hopefully this helps.